Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Cassandra and today we are continuing our yin yoga meridian series, mostly focusing on the spleen and stomach meridians. Begin in a wide like a child's pose, bringing your big toes together, letting the knees fall apart, and walk your hands forward until the forehead can rest on the ground. So the spleen and the stomach meridians focus mainly on the inner leg, a little bit on the hip flexors, so we will be doing a lot of poses that focus on the lower body. But they also run up into the chest or the side of the rib cage or up into the armpit, so we will do a back bend and a side body opener as well. I won't be using any props for this practice, but of course it's always a good idea when doing yin yoga to have a couple props nearby. This can be some blocks or even just some house couch cushions and blankets and pillows, whatever you have nearby. Get yourself comfortable in this first pose so that you feel enough of a stretch on the hips and on the lower back, but not so much so that it is causing you to remain tense and tight. We want to let our muscles relax so that the focus of the pose can really go into the joints. So into the pelvis, into the hips, into the low back. Yin yoga is a passive practice. So we hold these types of poses for an extended period of time. It's important that you find your edge, never pushing yourself too far. Although these poses are sensational, they should never ever be painful. If there is pain at any point throughout our practice, please back out of the pose. It's a good signal that you've gone a little bit too far. In this wide like a child's pose, feel your hips press towards the heels very lightly. Let gravity do the work for you. So all you need to do is relax and let go. Which is of course a lot easier said than done. If you notice your mind start to wander, just simply bring the awareness back to your breath. Slow, steady inhales and exhales through the nose. Holding here for another minute or two. Start to walk your palms in, lifting the chin, lifting the chest into your tabletop pose. Stepping your right foot forward in between the palms, maybe pad your left knee here either by folding your mat or placing a blanket underneath you. Left hand stays as it is, you're going to reach your right hand towards the back of the mat and catch a hold of your left foot as you pull that left heel in. Now this might be a pose where a strap is required. If you can't quite grab a hold of your foot or your ankle, you can always loop a belt or a strap around it to make this a little bit easier. 
So there's a bit of a twist here as the right shoulder opens, but really we're focusing mostly on the stretch and the opening at the front of the thigh, deep into the quads, so right into the hips. Imagine melting and pressing the hips down towards the floor. Breathe into that sensation of the pose. And because this is a pretty intense pose, you might notice that your left arm starts to tense up, or maybe your neck or your jaw. Soften whatever you can. And always know that you can come out of the pose if you need to. And let's release the hold of our back foot and bring the palms down to the floor. So one hand on either side of that right foot. We'll stay in this low lunge for another minute and a half or so. Drawing the shoulder blades down the back. And it might feel good to let your belly rest over your right thigh. You might need to put a block under each hand if the floor feels like it's a little bit further away. You might need extra padding under your left knee. Really take the time to make the pose your own instead of trying to forcing it to happen. Let's gently come out of this pose, back into your tabletop pose. You can unfold the mat and we'll move to the other side. This time your left foot will step forward between the palms and you can pad your right knee if needed. Keep your right hand on the floor as it is. Extend your left arm back behind you, bend the right knee and try to catch a hold of that right foot. So again, if you're unable to hold onto the foot with your hand, just use a strap or a belt to make this a little bit easier. We're here for about a minute and a half before we transition into the low lunge with both hands down on the floor. Remember to keep drawing that left shoulder down and away from the ear. You're melting your hips down to the floor. And sometimes when we pull the heel in toward us, we tend to lift the hips up to meet the foot. Instead, I want you to press the hips down and bring your foot in toward you. And notice how much pressure you're applying on your right wrist. Try to keep some of it in the fingertips and knuckles. You can always make a fist as well if that's more comfortable or put some padding underneath your right hand. Breathe through the intensity of the sensation.
and imagine you can breathe directly into the spleen and stomach meridian lines. And gently release the hold of the back foot. We'll just take our regular low lunge. Palms can rest on the floor. And if your wrists are starting to feel a little sensitive like mine, you can always make some fists and just rest on the knuckles. About a minute here, breathing slowly in and out through the nose. Notice if any other areas of your body are trying to overcompensate and tense up. We need to make sure our muscles stay relaxed so most of the stretch can go into our joints. With every exhale, feel yourself soften. And let's give our lower body a bit of a break. You can ease out of this pose back into your tabletop stance. Uncurl the mat and lower all the way down to your belly. Taking a little back bend here, we'll be setting ourselves up into Sphinx pose. So sliding your arms forward, the forearms will stay down on the floor. Keep your elbows and your palms about shoulder width distance apart, maybe a little bit wider. Toes are pointing back. You're lifting up through the chest and pulling your shoulders back behind you so there's an opening through the collarbones. Your tailbone is extending towards the heels so there's some space through the sacrum and lower back. And you decide how deep you go into this pose. So the closer you have your elbows to the shoulders, the deeper this back bend will be. If you need to lessen the intensity of the pose, you can walk your hands and your arms further out in front of you. You can keep your gaze straight ahead, back of the neck staying long, maybe closing the eyes to focus inward. Feel the breath flow into the chest so that when you inhale, the rib cage expands front to back and side to side. Letting the belly be soft and the legs relax.
and come all the way down and you're gonna flip over onto your back. We'll take a side body stretch with banana pose. Your hips need to go over towards the right side of your mat and then bring your shoulders, your head and your ankles over to the left, forming that nice banana shape. You can reach your arms up overhead holding onto the elbows and if you'd like to go even further, you can cross your right ankle over the top of your left. And while you make this crescent shape with the upper body, we're trying to open up the entire right side from the right shoulder all the way down into the hip and down into the IT band. Try to keep your right hip pressing down to the floor. And the more you're able to send your hips over to the right with your shoulders over to the left, the deeper and the more intense the sensation will feel. This is one of my all-time favorite yin yoga asanas and a great way to get into the spleen and stomach meridians. Relax your neck and your jaw. Allow the eyes to close. And find your breath in this pose. Start to bend your knees so you can press the feet into the floor, lifting the hips and bring your hips over towards the left side of your mat. The shoulders, the head and the ankles will move over towards the right side of your mat. And you can switch the interlace of the arms and this time it would be your left ankle crossing over the right. Press down a little bit through that left hip. You want everything, your entire body, to be facing up toward the sky. So not rolling over to one side more than the other. Both shoulder blades firmly planted on the floor. Imagine you can breathe directly into your left lung. Into the left shoulder, the left armpit. Down through the side of the waist. Wherever you feel this pose the most. Make any little adjustments that are required until you can get comfortable and settled in the shape. About two or so minutes here on this side.
and let's release this banana pose. So bring your hips and your shoulders back to center, bend the knees. And you're gonna pull your knees in toward your belly. This is like butterfly pose, but lying down on your back. Catch a hold of your feet or your big toes and try to keep the soles of the feet together as you pull your feet in as if they were going to go and touch your nose. The knees spread open wide. Try to find that middle point between extending the feet toward the face and still drawing the legs in toward the chest. This tends to look different from person to person. Just find the intensity of the stretch that works for you. You do need to engage the arms a little bit in a pose like this, but what's important is that you don't engage the muscles in the legs. Let your low back, your hips, and your legs soften. Notice if you're clenching the jaw or tightening up through the neck. Press your shoulders down. And if you have a hard time holding onto the feet, this is also another pose where a strap can be looped around both feet or both ankles. Send your breath down deep into the belly, deep into the inner groin and hips. Invite it to open up a little more with every breath that you take. Let's release this pose, pull the knees into the belly, and make your way into Shavasana, extending the legs and the arms out. Take up some space, draw the shoulders down and away from the ears, turning the palms to face up. Breathe directly into the stomach. Observe the differences in your body, in your mind, now as opposed to when you first began this class. Pay attention to what has shifted. Use your time here as an opportunity to really fully integrate the work that was done. Soften anything that is still trying to work, even the facial muscles, the fingers and the toes. And 
And we'll stay in this Shavasana for another three minutes or so. It was my pleasure to do this class with you, and I do hope you enjoyed it. Stay here as long as you would like. And when you are ready to get up, do so slowly and mindfully. Thank you again. Namaste.